All right, so fresh off the heels of my last video where I was talking to you about some pre-orders that I was excited about, well, guess what? In fact, the very same day I recorded that video, this one came in. It is Electric Bird by Donald Bird. This is the very first, or really one of two, titles that came out in the Third Man 313 series for Blue Note. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what I think. All right, so just a little bit about the album to orient you before we kind of dig into uh, into actually what this release looks like and what it sounds like. So first of all, Electric Bird was Donald Bird's something like 30th or 32nd album that he recorded as a leader. Guy was very prolific even by the time that this was put out in 1970. I actually think this was his 17th of like 24 albums that he put out for Blue Note. Would have been just after Fancy Free, just before Ethiopian Nights. Um, and again, 1970. So think about it. Bitches Brew, Miles Davis's Bitches Brew, which is a hugely influential album, uh, was released in March of 1970. This album was recorded in May and then uh, May of 1970, and then put out in November later that year. So the the influence is evident. Anytime that you look up details on this album, people are going to say that it was advised by by Bitches Brew. And, and there is a lot of elements there. I would actually argue that this album is simply more listenable, more of an enjoyable listen. That's my own personal opinion. Um, so I guess a, a few other things about this. It was recorded by Rudy Van Gelder during the Liberty era. So fortunately, we still had Rudy Van Gelder on the scene with Blue Note recording it, and um, and it's evident in how it sounds. Um, there's just four tracks on this album. Three of them clock in at over 10 minutes. Actually, one of them is like 13 minutes long. And um, three of these tracks are actually originals by Donald Byrd. All right, so I introduced the Third Man Records 313 series in my last video, but for those of you who haven't checked that video out yet, what is the Third Man Records 313 series? Well, this is Jack White's label based out of Detroit, and they had a partnership, or they just have a partnership now, with Blue Note where they're taking on five different titles, and they're actually pressing them at the Third Man plant. So the question that everybody asks is, why does Blue Note do this? Why don't they do it all themselves? I have no idea. There's probably valid reasons for them to do so. Maybe it has something to do with the desirability of the titles. Maybe it has something to do with uh, sort of, you know, getting time at, at a pressing plant and the, and the desire to push it out, farm it out to others to actually press. Don't really know. Uh, but what they are doing with this series is they are being remastered by Warren DeFever from the original analog tapes I believe in every single instance. Uh, these are each on 180 gram vinyl. They are again pressed at Third Man uh, Records pressing plant. And the titles thus far include Donald Byrd's uh, Electric Bird. You have Thad Jones's Detroit, New York Junction. You have Elvin Jones' Genesis. You have Kenny Cox and the Contemporary Jazz Quintet. And then you have Grant Green Live at Club Mo Mozambique. The interesting thing about these, and really what unifies them, right, is that um, these are, these are uh, Detroit musicians, right? Um, and, and that's why the, the partnership with, uh, with Third Man, which is based in Detroit, and that's why 313, because that's the, uh, the area code for Detroit. So it kind of makes sense. But what's interesting about these titles is that they are very much in the later period of, uh, of Blue Note's catalog, with the exception of that Thad Jones title. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting because these later albums do have kind of a 70s sound, and actually, I think, in a, in a really good way. And I'm, I'm curious if the thought process was that Third Man might be able to do a better job tackling that sound versus perhaps the earlier kind of mono hard bop stuff. I don't know, I'm just kind of speculating here. So in terms of the process that they're that they're using to put these out, um, not the process, but like the variants, right? Because Third Man is known for having variants um, that they can, you know, limited editions, all these different things. So for each of these titles, there is a standard black vinyl title. There is a swirl and color vinyl sort of um, thing. And then there is just a solid color vinyl edition. Um, so according to the website, there's only 313 copies for each of the variants. Now, I would assume that the black vinyl, the standard black vinyl, is not considered one of those variants, but I'm not sure. Uh, so I don't know to what extent this is a limited edition, but again, they're saying at least with, uh, with, the, with the color vinyl, with the swirl, um, they reference that indie, like independent stores might have an exclusive. I don't, I don't know enough about that, but in, in any event, they are quite limited. All right, so I wanted to just show you the cover because I'm actually fascinated by this thing, especially compared to the original. And so in fact, here, let me, let me show you what the original looks like. 
So this is the original cover, and these titles are, are just like famous for having ringware because it's a darker cover, and so therefore it's, it's much more prominent. But this is what the original pressing um, jacket looks like, right? Um, so by comparison, and I will show you close-ups of this stuff, by comparison, this is what the, uh, the latest reissue by Third Man looks like. So a couple of things to point out here. One, you know, obviously it's brand new, so you're gonna have the uh, the, the black um, background that, that looks pretty good, but this is a very intentionally matte background. And as I move it a little bit side to side, what you'll see is that the imagery is actually laminated, um, you know, sort of shiny kind of thing, including the text. And personally, as much as I'm a purist with covers, generally speaking, and I don't like how Third Man adjusted the covers for their Verve by Request series, this to me looks really, really sharp. Um, I actually enjoy this quite a bit, and I can confirm that the Thad Jones title as well has um, some of this kind of thing going on in the Detroit New York Junction cover, which my guess is going to is going to bother people more on that title than it will on this. Um, what I don't know is to what extent that this type of cover is limited to the color variants versus the standard black. The reason why I bring that up is because with the Verve by Request series. Uh, the yellow vinyl came with the yellow tinged jackets that they changed completely, and, the, and, and those were screen printed in much better quality versus the black vinyl editions, which were very sort of standard editions with thin, cheap jackets. So I don't know if this cover version that I just showed you is, is indeed limited. To the, uh, to the color variants. So what color variant did I get? Well, on the website, they advertised it really as blue vinyl with yellow sort of splatter. And it came like this, um, which is perfectly fine. I, don't, I didn't need the blue vinyl, but this is a black vinyl with yellow splatter. I don't know if they made a last minute choice say at the pressing plant, or maybe I thought I was getting something, but those are going to independent stores. I don't exactly know, but when I ordered from Blue Note's website and I chose this special edition that looked like it was blue with yellow splatter, this is, uh, this is what came in. So I know that a lot of folks are gonna look at this and they're gonna have something to say about either the yellow splatter, which I intentionally chose, you don't have to get that, but in every situation, you're gonna have the yellow uh, label. So Third Man is never shy about changing some of these things. I know that it disappoints purists like myself and possibly many of you. In this case, I don't know. It just doesn't bother me as much as you might think. All right, so I want to make a quick note about pressing quality because Third Man doesn't exactly have the best reputation for sort of stellar quality control at their plant. Maybe your experience is different than mine, but that's been my experience. So. With this title, there are a couple of issues. I found two little tiny pressing dimples or pressing bubbles. Um, those of us who have been collecting jazz, especially old jazz for a long time, know what these things look like. They're pretty common on a lot of prestige titles, especially the recycled vinyl stuff. They're pretty common on what, like VJ. I've seen Blue Note titles from time to time that have these little pressing bubbles. By and large, they make absolutely no impact to the playback. But in this case, one of them does. So it happens at the very first, uh, like almost in between the lead in and the music to track one on side one, there's a pressing dimple there and it causes about four or five very, very low level, kind of like thuds. And thud sounds like it's a loud thing. It's really, really not. It's borderline imperceptible, but I noticed it um, especially because, especially because this is actually pressed somewhat quietly, so I had to really turn it up. I had to turn it up a little bit more on my amp than I would normally for, uh, for, for most records. So I noticed that. I also noticed in one side there was a few little like light, unfeelable scratches or kind of marks. There was like a cluster of them on one side. Uh, makes absolutely no impact to the playback. And I gotta say, I'm actually not going to return this and get a different one. I didn't really think that these issues were that big of a deal, especially considering there's a lot of folks that are having issues with, with warps, um, not necessarily specific to Third Man, but just generally new music that's coming out. There's a lot of warps, uh, whether dish or sort of side warps. There's a lot of issues with non-fill that people are experiencing. Uh, I didn't have any of those issues with this one. In fact, it's, uh, it's perfectly flat. Um, so I didn't have any other issue, and I just didn't think it was big enough deal for me to go through the hassle of, uh, of doing it. 
So I know there's a lot of people who are, um, you know, very sort of meticulous and want everything to be, you know, exactly what they paid for essentially. And, um, and, and I can't fault you for that. But um, in any event, wanted to mention a couple of these issues. They were really, really insignificant as far as I'm concerned. All right, so let's talk about the differences between this uh, this 313 series and the original. So this is another circumstance, right, where I already had an original. It's in great shape, despite the fact that it has some cover wear. Why did I get this one? Well, it's a new series. I wanted to find out what this new series was about, whether they were going to do a good job. I came in skeptical because I really don't like the Verve by Request series. I just don't think the quality is where it needs to be. But I was optimistic, I would say. Also, I absolutely love this album. It is one of my entry points to the vinyl hobby. It's one of the first albums that I ever uh, listened to, certainly by Donald Byrd. And I love this era for him. I love, I mean, I love, all, you know, Fancy Free and I love um, Ethiopian Nights and I love Slow Dragon. I love all of this like later Donald Byrd stuff. Um, I just get uh, a lot of energy from. And so I just, um, I don't know. I, I just had to, uh, to kind of go for it. So. That being said, um, let me talk to you a little bit about what I heard. And actually, here's the thing. The top line sort of, you know, headline of this review is that there's really not very much difference. And that's actually, I think, a pretty good thing. Um, what I would say is that if you're th going into this thinking that it's going to sound like a tone poet compared to an original, it doesn't. Um, I would say that the, I'll call it like the coloring of the instruments and the sound stage and everything is not significantly changed. And I do think that Tone Poet uh, oftentimes brings out a lot of things, especially cymbals. Um, and I would say that this one is much closer to a reproduction of the original pressing than most, than almost any reissue that I've seen of a Blue Note. Uh, and so I, I actually think in this case, it's a, it's a very good thing. So um, what else can I say? I already said that I had to turn it up. It was uh, mastered a little bit quieter. So I did have to turn it up a little bit, no big deal. A lot, In fact, a lot of people prefer that uh, things get mastered a little bit uh, quieter. Um, if there is a difference between these two, the in fact, the biggest difference between these two is the bass. And I've heard about this. I don't own a copy of the Thad Jones yet, but I've heard that the bass is brought out quite a bit more. I can definitely confirm the bass is brought out quite a bit more. Um, the tactic that I used actually, because to some degree, I thought that there might be a little bit too much bass. What I remembered though, is, is that I, I have a subwoofer and I don't know necessarily that it's, I don't know how important it is for vintage records. Although I will say that I, I personally think that it adds quite a bit of warmth to the, uh, to the albums. It doesn't improve just the bass, improves the overall sound. Um, Third Man, I think, is uh, is simply used to probably putting out more modern sounding music and certainly of other genres. They ended up pulling the bass quite a bit forward in the mix. And so what I did is I simply switched off my sub and then guess what? It wasn't nearly as boomy and actually I thought it had a much better balance. And I'm perfectly fine having to uh, to do that. Maybe some people will still want to use their sub because they like the bass, um, but that's that's what I did. So the biggest difference though is the bass. Um, for sure, it is quite prominent in a few of the uh, in a few of the tracks. Um, and what I think it does is it it modernizes the sound maybe just a hair. Whereas the sort of '70s kind of you know funk electric kind of thing that's a little bit even distortion um, you know, that, that's created with some of that '70s sound during this electric period, both with Miles Davis as well as in this case Donald Byrd. Um, some of that is removed and even cleaned up, and I think part of that is because they brought the bass forward a little bit. Um, so what else? Uh, the percussion is quite interesting on this uh, on this record, and I don't know if it's sort of a traditional shaker or you know what's the Latin instrument? In, in, excuse me, the Latin instrument. It's called like a shaker. Um, so C H E K E R E. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it sounds like they're using that in on this record, and it is quite prominent in a really, really good way. There's actually a lot of detail around that uh, that instrument, and I found that it didn't sound as natural on the original pressing. It sounded a little bit more natural, a little bit more in room um, on the uh, on the reissue. Um, otherwise, I think that the reissue is actually a little bit better balanced, except for the bass which I think is a little bit too much. Um, I will say that it sounds analog as opposed to it sounding just, you know, digital. And it is analog, right? Um, or from the, you know, analog tapes. Um, and I think that it's, I think that it also sounds a little bit cleaner. Um, to me, 
on the original, having so many instruments playing at one time has a tendency to get a little bit muddy. And I think that with this modern reissue, it sounds maybe just a tiny bit cleaner. So just a couple of more things I think that I'll say. I wanna say it's on track two where there's um, quite a bit of flute. And there's this element where there's a flute solo and on the original, it almost feels like the flute is competing with the percussion. And so sometimes all you can hear is the percussion and sometimes you can hear the flute, but they're almost like fighting for each other, kind of at the same dynamic level. And on the, uh, on the reissue, it feels like the flute is able to almost rise above or kind of transcend some of the muddiness of the percussion. And there's just a little bit, um, I would say more clarity there. Um, otherwise, in terms of instruments on track three, it begins with this very high pitch trumpet herald that is perhaps intentionally distorted. And on the original, that distortion, um, trying to go for that Miles Davis electric sound is, is fine. It's how I've always heard the music, but it doesn't feel like it's as distorted on the, uh, the, the third man reissue. And I kind of like that. I kind of don't like, even if it was intended, that kind of like high pitch distortion on that opening trumpet herald. And again, that's on um, Shibaba is the, uh, is the title of track three. Um, also on the reissue, I wanna say it's like a bongo drum or maybe a conga drum that comes in. And one thing that I noticed is that on the reissue, um, there's a little bit more character to it, a little bit more detail. So I wanted to kind of close up by going back to that headline. And that was, I think, that there's not really a lot of difference. And I think that um, the third man did a really good job of, of matching uh, the, the original. And I kind of want to stand by that. So each of those little things that I mentioned, each of those like little minuscule nitpicky kind of things um, that, that I mentioned, in order to pick those out, I had to go back and forth between the original and the, uh, and the reissue many more times than I usually have to do. And so what that means in order to just, in order to even pick out those things. So what that means, and again, back to the headline, is that there really isn't a significant difference. And I was really surprised that they were able to do such a good job at replicating the original. Um, I would say that if you have an original already, do you need to do what I did and buy this one? You probably don't. I don't think you're gonna get that much. And in fact, you may lose a little bit if that base is something that bothers you. Uh, whereas if you've been waiting for an original or let's say that you have a non-Van Gelder stamped reissue already, um, this could be actually a very worthwhile upgrade. And obviously if you don't have it at all, um, just go get it because, because it's such a great album. And I think it's presented really, really well here. Obviously, the thing that you're going to have to keep an eye out for is the quality control. Again, you know, those couple of dimples could have just been my copy. Uh, only one of them uh, even, even sounded, and it was so minimal. If that dimple was anywhere else other than the lead-in, where it was a little bit quiet, I just would not have heard it because it would have been lost kind of in the music because in many ways, this is a very loud album. So I, I think that... Um, you know, I, I wouldn't let those couple of issues deter you from considering picking this up. Uh, my experience has only been good and actually based on my um, sort of satisfaction with this album, I'm picking up that Thad Jones title and I'm a little bit worried for a few reasons. One is because it's 1500 series mono. I'm wondering why Blue Note gave it up and let Third Man do it. Um, I'm, I'm a little worried uh, because I've heard that the bass is also prominent on this one as well as the fact that the label on the Thad Jones title says stereo, even though it's actually a mono. Um, and that just seems kind of kind of weird, kind of like a lazy error to me when they could have just made up another label. But um, again, because I was happy with this one and because my copy of Thad Jones's New York, uh, excuse me, Detroit, New York Junction is in G plus condition, I would love to have a clean copy. And I think that this could be a great way to hear it. So I hope this was, uh, I hope this was helpful. Thanks very much for sticking with me. I'll see you next time.